Слава Ісусу Христу! Слава навіки! Glory be to Jesus Christ! Glory forever! Христос посеред нас, є і буде. Christ is among us, is and always will be. Dear TCDSB Christian family, those greetings and responses to them that I just used a part of our Ukrainian Christian heritage. We greet each other with those greetings, and when we part, we say, Zbohom, God is with you, acknowledging the ever presence of our Lord among us. When we think about our heritage, among many things, we recognize our language, the clothes we wear, the songs we sing, the way we dance and celebrate, the food we eat. We think of people who form the foundation of our communal identity, our national and cultural heroes with whom we identify. All those things are very important so we can grow into unique persons while being nourished by our particular heritage. But sometimes, reflecting on those many things that influence us greatly, we might forget the most important element which stands at the foundation of our heritage. It is our faith in God. It is our faith that influences even those other things that I mentioned and much more. The way we pray and the prayers we are taught that come from generations past, church buildings that we worship in, the way we design and paint them and beautify them, the icons and the holy pictures of our Lord, Mother Mary and the saints that we put on the walls in our houses and by our bedrooms to remind us that while we are at all different, we belong to one big Christian family. Thanks be to God that we are taught our faith in schools, recognizing the mosaic of heritages, but with a simple goal to learn how to love God and our neighbor. We share our faith with each other, bringing new dimensions, the richness that comes from variety and not just from abundance. Today, when we celebrate the Ukrainian heritage, it is an opportunity to reflect how valuable we are for each other how the importance of our own roots should remind us to value the roots of others. For what is a tree without its root system? For what is a person without its communal heritage? Zbo, Christ is among us. Following Ukraine's old tradition, we welcome you with bread and salt to this year's Ukrainian-Canadian Heritage Celebration. With deep respect for Indigenous peoples in Canada, we acknowledge that all Toronto Catholic District School Board properties are situated upon traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge the land covered by Treaty 13 is held by the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Toronto is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Covenant. We also recognize the contribution and enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples in Ontario and the rest of Canada. Hello and welcome. It is my pleasure as Chair of the Toronto Catholic District School Board to join the TCDSB community in celebrating Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month. As one of the, the largest Catholic boards in Canada, serving our community over 175 years, we are proud to welcome students and families from around the world who enrich our schools through the diversity of languages, cultures, and traditions. Canadians of Ukrainian descent have contributed so much towards the growth and development of our towns, cities, and communities. Our Eastern Rite Ukrainian schools, like Joseph Cardinal Sleepy, St. Demetrius, St. Josephat, have successfully embodied Ukrainian religious, culture, 
and academic traditions. Celebrations like Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month remind us of our history and provide us with another opportunity to demonstrate our respect and appreciation for diversity. It is my hope that you all enjoy the celebrations and gain a greater sense of Ukrainian heritage and traditions this month. Happy Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month. Thank you. God bless. Stay safe. September marks Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month here in the TCDSB. This month gives us an opportunity to celebrate our strong connection and our relationship with the Ukrainian Canadian community and the Eastern Rite Ukrainian Catholic Church, a relationship that we have fostered and cherished for over 50 years. We're proud to celebrate the over 1.3 million Canadians of Ukrainian descent who enrich this country through their customs and their traditions. By learning about different cultures, our students gain a better understanding and an appreciation of the multicultural identity that shapes our city. I've witnessed our students participating in Ukrainian traditions like Pashansky, egg decorating during the Easter season, and wearing embroidered shirts during the Eastern Rite Eucharistic celebrations throughout the year. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit to St. Demetrius Parish this week and a tour of the beautiful church with Father John. And I was delighted to be welcomed by traditional Ukrainian songs and dance from students at St. Demetrius. We're blessed by our traditions and by our shared faith. Through celebrations like Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month, we reaffirm our commitment to the equity, diversity, and inclusion of everyone in our Catholic community. This year, we will explore the contributions of women of Ukrainian heritage to Canada and to the world. From poets to politicians, we will showcase well-known women from Canada and the Ukraine who have paved the way for future generations. We look forward to celebrating the diversity that exists in our board this September and throughout the school year. Happy Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month. Welcome to the Ukrainian Heritage Day and Month at the Toronto Catholic District School Board. This year, Ukraine celebrates 30 years of independence. For many, Ukrainian independence seemed like an impossible dream. The journey has taken centuries of sacrifice and millions of lives have been lost. But this year, Ukrainians are celebrating what most of us take for granted, freedom. Unfortunately, the struggle is not over as Ukraine is fighting a defensive war in the Donbas region of Ukraine. You may or may not be aware that colors of the Ukrainian flag symbolize the blue sky above a yellow field of wheat, representing Ukrainians as they are freedom-loving, independent, brave, hardworking, and vibrant. Here in Canada, Ukrainians were one of the first immigrant settlers in the three prairie provinces. The early decades of settlement were most difficult and challenging. Taming the forests and the harsh winter conditions were brutal experiences and made life extremely difficult. Among those immigrants was my grandfather, who unfortunately did not see his own children grow up. My mother never saw her father. After 70 years, she had closure when she found his grave. Today, some 1.3 million Canadians identify as Ukrainians. The immigration and impact on the Canadian scene is truly remarkable. Ukraine has many gifts, especially the tremendous gift of our faith passed down through the generations. Our faith guides us to walk in the light of Christ and is the foundation upon which families and community are built. In conclusion, the past 125 years Canadians of Ukrainian background have overcome tremendous obstacles to become a fully integrated and proud component of the overall Canadian fabric of society. Slava Ukraini! The history of Ukraine is defined by the Ukrainian people's enduring faith in their truth to live free on their own land and to choose their common destiny as a nation. Let's explore modern-day Ukraine.
Today, Ukraine marks the 30th anniversary of its independence. We see it as a great opportunity to present our vision of a modern, creative and dynamic Ukraine, a democratic European country and a dream destination to visit. Freedom, revolutions and revolutionary ideas, new economic opportunities and global food security, growing IT industry and advanced innovations, vibrant culture, creative industries, sports, and yet unexplored tourist destinations. That is what modern Ukraine is all about. We want you to feel Ukraine's spirit, plunge into its charms and grasp a range of opportunities it provides. Freedom is a source of our strength. It is at the core of our national identity, traditions, cultural heritage and language. Yet, Ukraine has always been a place where cultures and languages meet and reaching each other. Ukraine is diverse, dynamic and open to the world. It is the place to fulfill your dreams and realize new ideas. Ukraine has a lot to offer and we encourage you to come and get inspired. Happy 30th anniversary to Ukrainians all over the globe. And glory to Ukraine for many more years to come. Let us start this year's cultural expose with a special greeting to our TCDSB community from our famous Ukrainian Canadian actress Katrin Venik. Hi, it's Katrin Venik, Katrina Anna Venetska. I'm very proud to introduce September is Ukrainian Canadian Heritage Month. Being born and raised in Toronto, Canada, I am a very proud Ukrainian Canadian. I went to St. Demetrius School, went to PLOS and Sum, and was involved in Saturday school every Saturday in Matura. What it means to be a Ukrainian Canadian in Toronto, it means being part of a strong Ukrainian family, being part of a strong Ukrainian community. I'm very proud to celebrate our Ukrainian dances, our Ukrainian folk songs, our Ukrainian pierogies, and our great foods. We all have to come together to celebrate September. It is our month and being a proud Ukrainian Canadian. With this beautiful invitation from our famous Canadian actress Catherine Winnick, we welcome all of our viewers to this year's celebratory event of Ukrainian Canadian Heritage event where we will recognize and celebrate contributions of women from Ukraine and Canada made in the fields of literature, politics, science, fashion and film. Throughout history, women across the world paved the way forward with their bravery, intelligence, forward thinking and talent for the generations to come. We will begin with a tribute to Lesya Ukrainka an author of Ukrainian literature and a leading figure during the country's modernist movement. Throughout its long history, Ukraine has endured hundreds of years under foreign rule. It has had its land partitioned and the use of the Ukrainian language banned. Literature became the primary vehicle for the 19th century Ukrainian national revival, and Lesya Ukrainka was at the epicenter. Students of St. Joseph's Elementary School Prepare a video about the beloved poet. It's a beautiful sunny day as I walk through High Park in Toronto. I've come across the statue, the statue of Lesya Ukrinka. I stop, read the placard, and wonder, who is this? Who is Lesya Ukrinka? And why is there a statue of her in this park? On the placard, it is written, Larissa Kosach Kvitka, also known as Lesya Ukrinka. She was born February 25, 1871, in Novrad, Volensky, central Ukraine. Lesya died at the age of 42 from tuberculosis of the bone on August 1, 1913, in the country of Georgia. She was the second oldest child in her family. Along with her siblings, she was taught at home by her mother and tutors. Lesya continued to be homeschooled due to TB. She learned to play piano and took art lessons. Lesha was an extremely gifted child and was curious about everything. Although Lesha suffered from TB of the bone her whole life, this never stopped her in becoming one of the most influential women in Ukrainian history. Lesha Ukrinka was a trailblazer. 
is a forward-thinking woman who is a writer, translator, folklorist, public and cultural activist, and a pioneer Ukrainian feminist movement. She was a major contributor to the literary field in Ukraine. She began to write poetry at the age of nine and continued to do so throughout her life. She was 13 when Queen Valley, Lily of the Valley, was published. In 1893, the first collection of her poetry, On the Wings of Songs, was published. She also wrote epics, novels, dramas, such as The Noble Woman, Poetic Drama, The Fourth Song. Lesha Ukrinka wrote in a beloved Ukrainian language, something she was not willing to give up. Therefore, her works were published in western Ukraine, where Ukrainian language was used. Lesha was a very well-educated woman. She was fascinated by the various countries she traveled to for her help. She mastered many languages, for example, French, German, Italian, as well as Greek and Latin. Lesha and her brother organized a literary group, Riada, to promote the development of Ukrainian literature in Ukraine. It was also a platform where she used her knowledge of languages to translate into Ukrainian many of the world's best literature. She translated works from Byron, William Shakespeare, ancient writings of Homer, and St. Augustine, to name just a few. Lesha has taken her experience abroad to write an encyclopedia for her brothers and sisters, the ancient history of Oriental peoples. The works of Lesha Ukrinka focused on many themes, including beauty of nature, love, freedom, and independence of one's country, personal experience, purpose of poetry and poets, social and social motives, and triumph over hardship. Lesha used her writing as a way to motivate her fellow countrymen to learn and care for her beloved country, Ukraine. A young student recites her favorite poem of Lesha Ukrinka on the green hillside. Lesha Ukrinka's poem, Contra Spem Sparrow, Hope Against All Hope, written in 1890, talks about great courage in the face of danger and the heroic woman. The poem also leaves one with the meaning that one can turn hardship into victory, pain into joy, the impossible into possible. These are our ideals we work on every day. February 25, 2021 was the beginning of the year-long celebration of the 150th anniversary of the birth of Lesha Ukrinka. We have just touched the bare minimum of who she was and her importance. Ukraine was celebrated throughout the year nationally and globally in association with UNESCO. His values of peace, tolerance, inclusion, gender, and ethnic equalities, which the famous author professed throughout her life, Lesha Ukrinka left behind a vast literary heritage which deeply affects the Ukrainian and international cultural discourse even today. Marsha Furchuk Skripuch is a well-known Ukrainian-Canadian author of children and young adult fiction. Having immigrant parents and being born in Canada has influenced storytelling and writing. Let's get to know more about her from the students of Joseph Cardinal Slipescu. Ukrainian Heritage. Today we will be presenting about the famous Ukrainian-Canadian woman by Yulia Sofia Maxim Alexander, Michael Salmia and Anastasia. Marcia Forchuk Skrepuch. Marcia Forchuk Skrepuch was born in Brantford, Ontario in 1954. Her Ukrainian roots come from her father, who was a farmer in Ukraine and moved to Alberta. Both her parents were bookaholics, but Marcia did not like reading until she read Oliver Twist, which changed her opinion about reading and literature. Essentially, it changed her life. She is an author that writes about many subjects and often includes works about Ukrainians and their struggles in history. The Whole of the Mora is a topic that is explored each year at our school. The book that she wrote about it is titled Enough. Some of her other books include Stolen Child, Ming Bombs for Hitler, and Underground Soldier. Marsha fooled her teachers into thinking she knew how to read until everything caught up with her in grade 4 when she failed the reading exam. Even more embarrassing, she had to repeat the whole year. As the tallest kid in the class, she didn't want to be seen reading little tiny books, so she taught herself how to read by taking out the thickest book in the children's section of the library. Little did she know, this one action would turn her life around. Soon she decided that she was a huge fan of reading, but she also wanted to write as well. Later, she wrote a novel 
and it got lots of rejections, but three publishers were interested and published her novel. This is the story of how Marsha Fochukskirpu became a writer. Now I will be showing you a short video clip from one of her books. How would you feel if on the first day of school you came home and you looked in the mirror and suddenly you had a flashback of meeting Hitler face to face? This is exactly what happens to Nadia in Stolen Girl. Nadia's memories come back in nightmares and flashbacks. She has no idea and no control over when they happen. Sometimes it will be spurred by something that she's wearing. Other times it will be something she sees on the street. And then suddenly she has this horrific memory and it's almost like traveling back in time, bam. She has this memory that makes no sense to her except that it's terrifying. The thing that Nadia is most afraid of is who she really is. She's almost afraid to remember her past because what if she's one of the bad guys? What if she is a Nazi? Dancing is in the DNA of Ukrainians and no matter where we find ourselves, our genetic code remains strong through generations. And so no celebration of Ukrainian heritage goes without a folk dance. Please enjoy the dance by Ukrainian Shumka dancers from Edmonton that was recorded for the 30th anniversary of Ukraine's independence, accompanied by the Ukrainian Bandurus Capella of North America.
Continuing with this year's theme of recognizing and celebrating strong and influential women, the students of Joseph Gordon-Asley Bay School will talk about the Right Honorable Christia Freeland. This is a presentation about Christia Freeland by Alexander and Yulia Belay from Joseph Cardinal Sleepy School. Christia was born on August 2nd in, in 1968 in the town of Peace River. She's married to Graham Bowley and has three beautiful children, Ivan, Helena, and Natalia. Her parents were Helena Pomiak Freeland and Donald Freeland. Her, Helena sadly passed away in 2007, but Donald was still alive. She attended, she attended college at St. Anthony's College. Christia also loves riding her bike with her family. Christia Alexandra Freeland, PCMP, is a Canadian politician serving as the 10th Deputy Prime Minister of Canada since 2019 and as the Minister of Finance since 2020. Christia is a member of the Liberal Party. Freeland represents the University of Rosedale in the House of Commons. Previously, she was a freelance journalist. She has written several nonfiction books. She was first appointed by cabinet following the 2015 election and is the first woman to hold the finance portfolio. This is Christia Freeland with President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Volensky. But as a Ukrainian Canadian, proud to live in Toronto and proud to be originally from Alberta. I know firsthand the power of our culture to bring our community together. Singing is a way to tell one's story, to inspire, to bring hope. Let's listen to Odessa and Vadim Krasnuki bringing us the notes of positivity in their cover of Nadia Ye. As long as you can see the sun come up each day, there is a way.
From literature to politics to science, women persistently continue to stride ahead and leave a mark showing that through learning, curiosity and creativity, you can reach the stars. Introducing Roberta Bondar, Canada's first female astronaut and the first neurologist in space. Roberta Bondar was born on December 4th, 1945 in Sault Ste. Marie. She has one sibling, Barbara Bondar, and her parents are Edward Bondar and Mildred Bondar. Roberta Bondar is Canada's first female astronaut and the first neurologist in space. After more than a decade as head of an international space medicine research team collaborating with NASA, Bondar became a consultant and speaker in the business scientific and medical communities. She studied at Western University and University of Guelph. Roberta Bondar is a proud Ukrainian Canadian. Her father who worked for the Sault Ste. Marie Public Utilities Commission is of Ukrainian descent and her mother an educator is of English descent. On January 22, 1992, Roberta Bondar became the first Canadian woman, the second Canadian, and the first neurologist in space. She flew aboard Space Shuttle Discovery, the only Canadian woman of the seven crew members of NASA missions STS-42. We finish this year's cultural expose on the note of beauty and fashion with Ukrainian-Canadian fashion model Daria Verbove. Daria Werbui is a Ukrainian-Canadian fashion model. She was born on November 19, 1983 in a Eastern European city in Poland called Krakow. Daria's parents are Daniel and Anna Werbui. Daniel Werbui was an engineer and Anna Werbui was a teacher. She also has two siblings, Oris and Oksana. In 1989, Daria 1989, Daria's family decided to relocate to Mississauga near Toronto, Canada. Daria attended St. Sophia Ukrainian Catholic Elementary School. Then she went to Kawartha Park Secondary School in Mississauga, where she studied visual arts. Throughout her whole career, Daria has modeled for Calvin Klein, Alessandro, Del Aqua, DKNY, Alexander McQueen, Gucci, Burberry, Alberta Ferretti, Christian Dior, Dolce and Gabbana, and other other elite fashion brands. Daria is best known for being the spokeswoman of Lancome for almost a decade. She has in, appeared in more than 150 magazines, including Numero, Harper's, Elle, Madame Figaro, Bazaar, Flair, and Vogue, Ukrainian, US, Brazil, Paris, Australia, Japan, Portugal, Italy, Korea, Spain, and Greece. Daria also has the record for opening the most catwalks in one season. Thank you all for joining us in celebrating our Ukrainian-Canadian heritage through recognizing the meaningful contributions of these influential women to Canada and the world. Let us leave you with this legendary song that unites generations of Ukrainians across the globe. Until next time. До наступних зустрічей. Дороги, що їм треба, поки зави чубачки шлях.
Kaj tu vid tebe i do tebe Po zolotych twoich stryżkach Mnie nie może nie lubić Tobie nie można nie czysty Wiesz, że ty łat przyjdzie żyć Póki żywesz i klitnesz te I znałem Ukraińsk 